Every dog has his day, and for an elite view, this is the day. The Westminster Dog Show at Madison Square Garden. Whether you're crazy about canines, a casual acquaintance of man's best friend, or someone who sprints across the street at the sight of a puppy, chances are you've heard of the Westminster Kennel Club Dog Show. Yes, it's a really big deal. Here to share some fascinating facts about one of America's oldest and most prestigious sporting events, and in the process, help us paw through some insider info is the always fetching, always engaging co-host of Real News, Tara Setmayer. How you doing, Tara? I'm happy to be here, Raj. So this is your area of expertise. Yes, this is one of those things where people say, tell us something about you no one would expect. And um, I'm, I'm actually really happy to have a chance to talk about my life in the world of dog shows. So tell me about the history of this dog show. Well, the Westminster Dog Show is the one of the oldest sporting events in the country next to the Kentucky Derby. It actually predates the light bulb and the invention of the automobile. And speaking of automobiles, back in 1908, a car cost about $825, but dogs at Westminster, they could cost up to $5,000. It was very serious, very exclusive event. Wow. So the actual Westminster Kennel Club Dog Show, mm -hmm. sort of like the Super Bowl, if you will, right? Yes, it's very prestigious. It's, it's um, you have to have, you have to have a championship dog, which means you have had to win a certain amount of points to become a champion in your breed. There's a standard for each breed of dog, and when you breed the dogs and you bring them into the ring and, and show them, you're, they're judged based on this written standard. So where does uh, where does Tara come into this equation? Actually, I come from a long line of animal lovers and dog lovers in my family. My grandmother started showing dogs as a dog handler about um, 1956, I believe, and she was a little lady, but she was tough, and she started off with obedience training and field and rescue with German Shepherds. But as she got older, she scaled down a little bit and went to toy dogs, particularly Pomeranians. This is uh, my grandmother winning Best in Show, and my grandmother has uh, almost a dozen Best in Shows, and she became very well known and very successful as a Pomeranian dog handler, and she's actually in the AKC Dog Show Hall of Fame. And you just kind of followed in her steps? Yeah, as a little kid, um, on weekends during the summer, I would go with my grandmother to dog shows, and I competed in junior showmanship from the time I was nine until I was 14. I watch these dog shows, and it, to me it seems sort of arbitrary like I don't understand what everything is judged right. on so if you could kind of clarify sure. like what's going down at these shows that'd be awesome right well for example um, my grandmother she showed Pomeranians and they're supposed to have a certain eye shape almond eyes their coat is supposed to be a certain way their ears are supposed to be placed a certain place this is this is all according to written standards for me I showed Papillons I actually was um, the number one junior handler for my breed four years in a row. And some people may know what a papillon looks like, but they're called, papillon means butterfly in French because of the fringe on their ears. They look like butterflies. The longer the fringe is, the closer to the standard the papillon is. And that's what the judge is looking at. The dog show world, the industry, is a very serious business. People take this stuff very seriously. And they've had some rule changes over the years. They used to only have 2,000 entries, but this year they're looking at almost 3,200 because they They've expanded it to two venues and that's allowed for a little bit more room so they have more entries but something that I found to be controversial I mean I've been out of the dog show world for many years but they're allowing mixed breeds into the competition for purists my grandmother I'm sure she's spinning in her grave because when you're a purist there are no mixed breeds in the dog shows but they're allowing them in an agility competition not the not the judging competition okay now I've heard that that's like I mean that's oh, like I know there no had to be a lot of controversy no, no. I don't fully understand why. So if you will, why is that just like not cool? Well, because you, see, you know, going back to when you had your first dog shows in the in you know the 1870s, they were they started off with just pointers and setters, and those breeds were bred for hunting, and so there were very specific purposes that a lot of these breeds had, and so when you start mixing breeds, it takes away from what the original breed was bred for. So what does it mean to the breed? as a whole if it 
wins this big championship. Okay, so Best in Show at Westminster, like I said, is like the Super Bowl. But what it does, it exposes the world to a breed that you may or may not have ever heard of. You start to see these dogs in commercials. It's, it's lucrative for breeders who specialize in that breed because then there's more demand for them. So it's great exposure for that breed, both for education purposes and financially. You know, some people play lacrosse, some people do even crazy stuff like fencing. Why would you recommend or push someone in the direction of this kind of activity? For people who love animals and who particularly love dogs, it's a really neat and different way to get up close and see all the different breeds. But it's not for everybody. It's a niche thing. And with television now, it's become really popular. And I'm, I'm glad to see more people are getting interested in, in uh, dog show competitions. You just went up like two notches on the cool meter today. <laughs> Sarah, thank you so much. My pleasure. You're awesome.